Yeah, exactly. No, this movie, right? It's, I don't know. I think it holds up well. I think it's still a lot of fun. I really enjoyed watching this. I I watched it, it in 95. It was so fun to watch. I watched it in 95, and I had a lot more fun now. And I think I had more fun now because I know Sam Raimi's movie so well, as opposed to when I was 13. Exactly. So I want to say this is the first Sam Raimi movie I ever watched. Where, oh, wow, really? Well, because in 95, I was 14. Yeah. Uh, I, I hadn't figured out... Um, I hadn't figured out like uh, what the Evil Dead was yet, and so the other movie would have been Dark Man, but I didn't watch that till after I watched this movie. I remember, I remember that, and so this would be my first exposure. So I didn't know what Sam Raimi movies were. Got it. I think mine was Army of Darkness. Yeah, and then well, maybe I watched maybe I watched some Xena and Hercules. That oh yeah, he was kind of a producer on right. Yeah, Rob Tappert but, and him. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, dude. so but know know what's sad about this though? What? Like you were saying the budget was thirty five million. The box office was 18.6. Yeah, it didn't do well. I, I also think this sort of came at a time in 95 when West, like, there weren't too many more Westerns after this, were there? 95 wasn't too big. So, so you had the big craze in the early 90s. Where you had, like, both Wyatt Earp and Tombstone. Uh, you had Unforgiven. That was 95, right? 90, oh, Unforgiven was 92. 92, right. And then there was, what was the one with all the girls in it? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, bad, bad Girls. girls. Bad yeah. Girls. Yeah, Bad Girls. So that was kind of a thing. Well, and then had... there was like Silver... Oh, sorry. Go for it. Sorry. I was going to say Silverado was 89, right? So that was kind of the beginning of it. Yeah, what? Dance of the Wolves, 90. You had 89 Young Guns, Unforgiven, 92, Tombstone, 93, Wyatt Earp, 94, Quigley Down Under, Posse was 93, Geronimo was 93, Maverick was 94... Bad Girls was 94, Wagons East was 94, City Slickers was yeah. 91. So I think just the, well, 96 was the Cherokee Kid with Sinbad. But I think at that time, I, do, I, do, I think at 95, people were just like, I can't do another one. I just can't yeah. do it. Now, what, what do you think? In, I agree with you 100%, but in that list of movies you just ram, rambled off, one of my top 10 all-time favorite movies was mentioned. When you're top- other, other than Tombstone, so two of my all-time favorite movies you mentioned in that list. All right, so it's either so Maverick what? or it's either Dance, Dance with the Wolves or Maverick. No, Quigley Down Under. Really? Have you seen that? No, I have never seen Quigley Down Under. Oh, dude, Alan Rickman. And, oh, yeah. And that and then Tom Selleck. Yeah, it's so good. Simon Windsor did it. Yeah. No, He's it's a, like a legit super good movie. I just see the mustache and I'm like, I don't know. No, and it's like it's like Quigley Down Under and it's like a weird name and it's like Australian because he's done under. But give it give it a shot. It'd be it, it'd be a fun one for you and Megan to watch together. Quigley all right. Sounds good. And then we can talk about it one day on the podcast. I'd love that. All right. Hey, so how about this? Wanna jump in to do our Sam Raimi Super Squad? Yeah. So what what we were talking we were gonna do is we were gonna do a uh Oh, I wanted to say one more thing about the movie before we go in there. Yeah. I think one of the most – the most Sam Raimi moment in the movie was when he does a montage just against a black screen. It's like a black background that you yeah. just see like an actor or like a gun. Like I was like, oh, he's cutting costs and making it look good at the same time. And I wanted to know more about those guys who were getting shot. Yeah. Like where is this, where is this leading to? And I like how Gene Hackman laughed when the guy shooting the double pistols killed the guy. Gene Hackman's like, right. yeah. Love that scene. Yes. Okay, so our our list today was going to be um, if we were going to offer as a studio, much like we did for Carl Urban, if we were going to offer Sam Raimi a seven picture deal to sign exclusively with us, what would be those seven pictures we'd we'd offer him? <laughs> and so it can be a totally original concept, or it, with just like a concept and an actor, or it can be a reboot. But we're going to offer him at the end of this conversation seven pictures. What are they going to be? Can I start? I want you to start. All right. I got a movie called Bozo Rodeo. Bozo Rodeo. I like this already. And it stars um, it stars his, his buddy, Bruce Campbell, as a yep. rodeo clown. And he's just sort of towards the end of it. And somehow yeah. he gets pulled back into it to help other rodeo crown, uh, clowns. But basically right. the movie is just a chance for Sam Raimi to beat the living daylights out of Bruce Campbell one last time. Can the tagline be... It just isn't funny anymore. <laughs> there it is. And it's just, and, you know, we all know that Bruce, Bruce, like Sam Raimi loves kicking the crap out of Bruce Campbell. So in this deleted scene, right. Quick and the Dead, 
he had Pat Hangel kick the crap out of Bruce Campbell because he's like, yeah, this is a stunt guy. Just kick him. So the right. entire scene is Pat, King, K- Pat Hangel kicking Bruce Campbell. So Bozo Rodeo is just a really gonzo kind of comedy where Bruce Campbell gets the this, this snot beat out of him. And that's I love it. like $30 million just pummel Bruce Campbell for three months. Okay. All right. What do you got? I, I, I love that. So here's what I got. And this is – I love that you, you your start was an original concept. I love that. I went a little bit different with a, like the most studio move you can do to offer a director. I want to offer him the Ryan Reynolds helmed spinoff from Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, I like that. So directed like, by Sam three, Raimi? Directed by Sam Raimi, starring Ryan Reynolds, produced by The Rock. And it's just like a third tier spinoff from the it's, – it's a Hobbs and Shaw spinoff of like – but it's a prequel – of like Ryan Reynolds after um, the rock has left his platoon trying to be the new leader and trying to be, to be Dwayne Johnson of the, of the crew. Oh, I love that. Getting his tattoo. And then you just let him go. Right. Getting his tattoo. You can, you can let him go. And that's, that's the, the, that's the very last scene is he's like getting the tattoo. And he just get the living. He gets schnockered for two hours. He would just get beat up. Right. Yeah, and but you could you could do whatever you want with it. There's no rules. It's not like it's going to be a Fast and the Furious movie, but it's in that world. It's a triple spinoff, so it's a little more loose. And I think Sam Raimi could flex his muscles a little bit. Oh, I love that. All right, so I got a weird one for you. Talk so, to me. Solo two. Solo two. So he gets the. I love the cast of the original Solo. I love everyone love involved. Bring in right. Sam Raimi. Give him a hundred million dollars, and just yeah. Go, because they'll make that money back, and he'll he, he hasn't he'll make it he'll do he'll do fine he'll make he made that Oz movie and it made a billion dollars, so right Disney like him, just give him a hundred million dollars, let him write a fun script, and I think these people would work to the best of their abilities with Sam Raimi making this movie. Yeah, make so it, I'll go. For I love it. it. No, I'm going to say on that line of thinking because clearly now he's in the Disney realm, and this is a very real moment. So if anybody if if Kevin Feige's listening. Give him the Fantastic Four reboot. Oh, yep. He's proven he can do it with Spider-Man. Nobody wants to touch Fantastic Four because it's twice burned, three yeah. times burned if you count Roger Corman. Give it to Sam Raimi. Let him do the the MCU version of the Fantastic Four. I love that. Like if you look at if you look at the Russo brothers, they did their like their Captain America trilogy, right? Which was just um, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and then uh, Infinity War and Endgame. That was like their – it was really a Captain America trilogy they did, and they nailed it. So give give uh, Raimi a shot to do to do a, a chunk of movies like that. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Wouldn't he do a great job? Yeah, he'd crush it. We need that movie right now. Yeah. All right, you ready for mine? I love it. All right, so it's a movie called Who's At My Door. Okay. And it stars Jane Levi. Uh, Levi. She's from Don't Breathe suburgatory and then she was also in um i don't feel at home in this world anymore she's also in the evil dead remake she's the main star in that right and now this movie is essentially it's like scream meets evil dead but she's just okay fight and meets stranger wait was it stranger on a phone phone on yep. a sh- stranger a stranger butt dialed me what, what's the name of this movie uh when, yeah, stranger know, calls. when a stranger calls so it's it's a mixture of those three movies but it's just her fighting entities coming into her house and she's just getting beat up because he just i'm telling you, sam raimi loves beating up on his people so it's him but it turns out that toby mcguire is the billy zane-esque demon knight villain oh i right? like that a lot so he's trying to get in and he has all these forces and she's fighting him off in her home and i just love okay. the who's at my door <laughs> that's but, incredible but like a comedy why you know when they say drag me to hell they play it like like have fun with it so who's at my door is my next one right all right okay so mine would be a big screen adaptation of a 1970s television show it would be starring tom hardy and it would be the fall guy Ooh. right so yeah. you you said it a number, number of times tonight i was biting my tongue i don't want to give this away but he loves knowing that guys are stuntmen so what would be better than a movie about an out-of-work stuntman oh, who solves be... crimes on the side wow an out-of-work stuntman who sells it's like, well, I get no. I, he's he's an, sorry, not out of work, but he's like a freelance stunt man. Yeah. So he gets to go and do movie stunts, but he's also like a, a private eye on the side. I love that with Tom Hardy. Yeah, as the fall guy. That's the, that's the, my favorite thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I love that. That's I just want to see Tom Hardy and and 
Sam Raimi get together. It'd be a match made in heaven. Right? Oh, it'd be so good. All right. So this is for selfish reasons. But I want a movie called Escape from Hell, where Allison Lohman's character escapes from hell. Mm-hmm. And the, she's just being chased to... Uh, she's being chased to be brought back to hell. So it's just okay. her trying to find that button so that she can give the curse back. But she has to do it in a finite amount of time. So it's like Crank... But with Allison <laughs> Lohman, her husband directed that, actually, uh, directed uh, that. Like, so it's, she's just trying to get a button back to reverse the curse that was put on her because she escaped. And it's just okay. a sequel, all the, like Justin Long's back, all those cool people. There's another goat. It's just her running around trying to reverse the curse. I love that. Right, what do you got? Okay. Um, I got Trofer Grace because he knows him from Spider-Man 3. Yeah. In a remake of Flight of the Navigator. Wait, is he? Wait, who is he? He plays the kid. So it'd be like, instead of being a kid there, it would be like, because Trevor Grace looks really young. So or make yeah. him like tw- 21 out of, out of university, Flight of the Navigator. So Topher Grace playing 21 years old, flying around in a plane? Well, like a silver te- teardrop. All right, this needs to happen. Right? I want this movie. Just put him, just put Topher Grace. I just, I like Topher Grace. <laughs> I, like I, like the, I like the yeah. audacity of this. Yeah, just like he, he was a kid, now he's troll for grace. Okay, I got another one. I got another good one for you. Okay. So all these animated movies are happening now. Do Spider-Man 4, but make it an animated movie and have all the same voice works come back? Dude, 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 dude. You could do a sequel to Into the Spider-Verse where they go into the Randy Spider-Verse. That's right. And he directs it. You, that could legit happen tomorrow. They want him to do it. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, that's incredible. Right. That would be so good. It would make, and then you could tie in like um, Andrew Garfield Spider Man. You could tie in like Tom Holland Spider Man. It would be amazing. You're loving this idea. Oh, but that's my favorite idea of the night: animated Spider Man Four. Oh, that makes me happy, man. What, which one you got next? Okay, um, so I have a few, a couple left here. Okay, um, but I'm gonna save my, I'm gonna save this one for the last one because I think that's what it needs to, where it needs to land. Um, I would like to see Sam Raimi direct the thundercats movie whoa yeah like a real earnest thundercats like and done in the vein of like guardians of the galaxy like it happens in space and then they come to earth but like just a real like sweet thundercats movie let him go for it do you think he would he care take... about the thundercats or would it be a sam raimi thundercats um i think it would be a sam raimi thundercats but he kind of does the thing where he takes his material seriously but doesn't take himself seriously got it i like that so, that, so yeah, Thundercats movie, and it would be starring um, Vin Diesel as Panthro, and it would be starring um, um, Jason Momoa as Lionel. Ooh, I like that. Right, he's kind of got that mane of hair. <laughs> they, they wouldn't even need to dress him up as Thundercats. No, he just shows up, and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, you look enough like a tiger." <laughs> Put him on set. We're just gonna green screen him anyway. Yeah, I love it, Thundercats, and that's a uh, live action. Live action. Oh, my goodness. All right, you want to hear mine, which is crazy? Deep Blue Sea 2. And it reunites oh, LL Cool J and TJ, Thomas Jane. Yeah. Imagine that. He, that's Imagine. a good one. And they're, Oh, they, that's good. Some escaped, right? And so they're right. back at it, going at them. Yeah. No, that is that is 100% amazing. $100 million budget. Would would they tie in – Would could you tie in – um, the Meg, Jason Statham's Jason Statham's character from the Meg. Well, that Meg wasn't a real megalodon. It was created by the same people, and that's why right. it had just gotten under there. It wasn't down there for billions of years, millions of it was years. Down there for a week. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, they th- those have been floating around since '99. That's it. Of course, love it. Of course, yep. Jason Statham's in this, but he's not taking over the franchise over TJ and LL though. LL and TJ right. are the crew, and they team up with Statham for a little bit. That's my only caveat. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Right, I love it. What he, do you got? He, he, oh, sorry. Um, I have I have Sam Raimi doing a remake of The Rocketeer. Oh, right, that kind of era film. It it has a, a Campbell connection because um, Bruce Campbell's cousin was the lead in it before. But it could be it could be a sequel. It could be a reboot. But I think he could handle that kind of material very very well. And the man who's going to be in the Rocketeer outfit, just for Megan, is Chris Pine. Oh man. I was, I was I almost just yelled Megan. <laughs> I almost right? brought her in here. That's perfect. He would pull off 
He would have a lot of fun with it.